I'm Alex. I'm also Alex. And we just shot a social eyewear campaign for a UK based brand. And we thought we'd make a video explaining how that process went, what we've learned, and what we would change in the future. So let's take it away. I think we're going to start off with explaining how this project actually came about and I think Alex can explain that because um, he had a relationship with the brand before this project started. So about a year ago I was approached by a brand, eyewear brand called Kamize uh, based in London and uh, I had shot a campaign for them in London and it went really well. Um, they were super happy and it was just a great company to work with. Um, and then a few months ago, I had decided to come out to uh, Cape Town um, to visit Alex um, and had the idea of maybe pitching this, uh, pitching another shoot um, out here while I was here to the brand to give them something unique um, in terms of content and also make some money while I was out here um, to double down and pay for some of the expenses uh, of the trip. So basically reached out to them, put together a mood board, uh, and then showed them, you know, some ideas I had. They were initially cool with the idea, but um, we had to go back and forth a little bit, come up with some more solidified ideas, and then that basically began the process. So the next question was, um, you know, how did we work together? How did we split the work, both of us as producers, um, to make this shoot happen on a smaller scale, but with a high production value? This is something super tricky, so I want to ask you, Alex, do you have some insight into that? Did you want to explain that a little bit, how we went about it? So I think when it comes to the pre-production side of things, uh, we kind of split the producer role and um, shared the workload on that. And when it came to shooting, um, Alex was more so the photographer on this project. And since I have more experience uh, as a DOP, uh, I covered more the film video aspect. And yeah, I think that worked really well. Um, we bo were both able to kind of have an eye on things and yeah, I think the outcome really speaks for itself. So I think firstly the most important part of our crew uh, was the stylist. Um, just because that really had to complement the brand's aesthetic um, and the brand really had to be happy with the clothing and how it uh, sat on the models and how it really associated with the brand. Um, so we had to organize a stylist, Mandy, who did an amazing job. And then makeup and um, the brand wanted two models. Um, maybe you can speak a little about, the, about that process. So on the casting front, uh, initially I'd pitched a single model, keep it small, but the, because of the fact that there's so many um, different uh, looks in this shoot and different types of eyewear, they wanted to do a male and a female model. So I, um, you know, told them, you know, these these are kind of like the vibes that I had intended in terms of the casting, but uh, they took that and then came back. Uh, Alex helped with uh, some uh, casting or some contacts, I should say, sorry, with the agents. So we reached out to them and then they came back with these packages. Uh, and then from there, the brand made their decisions. Um, we ended up going with Shakes and Sky um, and you'll see them here. We'll cut to a quick clip of them. Super great models, um, both worked really well with each other. I think something that's key to consider in terms of the casting is always to make sure the models are of similar height. If you're working with a male and a female model, it makes it a lot easier, especially with framing and stuff. Um, the other thing that we had to do was find an assistant. Uh, luckily, my friend Anne-Marie from London, she was in town and she helped out on this project. She's a super talented photographer. Um, you can check out her work, we'll link it here. Um, and because she is so, you know, skilled, it was able, we were able to do a lot more. Um, we had initially intended to find uh, someone who was less experienced, but quickly learned while we were shooting that that would have been a huge mistake. Um, there was a lot of really challenging aspects to this. And so to have an assistant who is overly qualified, especially with film, especially with film made it really, really uh, easy or easier to navigate these uh, difficult shooting environments. So uh, really grateful for her, for her for coming through. 
um, and I think she added a huge aspect to the crew. The other thing we had was the security and that was super helpful for peace of mind and helping us kind of like move gear around as well. They took on, you know, additional um, carrying and things that we hadn't actually asked of them. So I think the key thing to take from all this is to find people who are very low ego and ha happy to help out. It makes for a better shoot um, and it makes the creative process a lot more enjoyable. Uh, next up we're going to talk about the gear we used. Um, so photo wise we really wanted to shoot everything on film. We did have a 5D Mark IV digital camera too which we kind of used as a, a backup and just to make sure that uh, we had something just to fall back on in case things go wrong. Um, but we used a EOS 3. Uh, for the 35 mil shots, uh, which we both shoot on and we really really enjoy um, takes the EF lenses and um, It's just a really solid camera like it's a workhorse We've had no problems so far with these cameras and can highly recommend them. I think any of the EOS cameras uh, and then medium format we use the Mamiya RZ67 um, which we both love. Uh, Alex has his own RB, I have an RZ. And yeah, I think just for those like campaign style shots, it makes a huge difference in terms of quality. Yeah, the one last thing I would add in is during the shoot, uh, we had some technical issues and my go-to lens, the 24 by 70 stopped working all of a sudden. So one thing to learn from that is to always bring backup lenses. Luckily we had a couple, Alex brought some extra ones. I didn't bring that many since I was flying from London, but uh, that really saved us because otherwise we would have been basically screwed without the lenses. Um, so yeah, learning experience from that and that's always something that's gonna happen and you take on these projects and there will be things that go wrong and you just have to adapt and improvise on the fly. And then on the video aspect, um, we used the Blackmagic 6K, which I'm shooting on right now. Um, that I have kitted out into like a cinema rig with like a V-Lock battery and a screen and just recording to an SSD. Um, so yeah, that I used. I also shot some vertical stuff on that, just turning the camera 90 degrees, which the brand wanted. Um, so yeah, all the footage you see on the shoot day, that's all shot on that. So in terms of production this is quite a lengthy process because there's a lot of different kind of styles of content that we have created um, uh, Alex shot video I focused on the photo side so on my side uh, I shot medium format 35 digital as well as portrait uh, trying to just get as many different formats as possible to give the client a lot of choices and variety so that they can you know have a nice data bank of uh, photos and things that they can pull from this shoot was intended to really you know bolster up their social media channels and give them something to to new to post um, from the previous campaign after we shot um, I went and you know put all of the digital files as well as all the 35 millimeter scans and the 120 into contact sheets and sent those over to the client um, we're waiting on the client to make those selections but once those are done I'm going back to London and then I will be um, printing uh, at uh, rapid eye in terms of the video on the day I'd really just shot as much as I could I'm trying to get good product shots and then also full body shots and then a lot of like mood shots to kind of mix in so just covering those bases I think just really helps with trying to develop an edit especially when you don't know exactly how the edit's gonna come out uh, if you haven't planned it shot for shot so I think the biggest lesson we we learned from this project was the fact of trying to be a producer and a creative at the same time um, really takes away from the creative aspect on the day we were focusing on things like is the security going to be here on time who's eating what for lunch also be like a, a first ad of like when we moving to the next location um, so i think that brought an aspect of stress which we maybe could have outsourced to a producer on my end i would say um, one of the biggest kind of learning experiences from this was actually speaking to the client directly while uh, on the shoot on the previous campaign the client was in the studio um, and they were making those decisions but because obviously I was here in Cape Town I had to take breaks to text and call and communicate with the client while we were in between shots which is 
once again, uh, more of a producer role or having someone, you know, just who is strictly responsible for communicating with the client, it makes it a lot easier. I think also if you're doing these kinds of shoots and the client can't be there, you should really prep as much as possible. The things we would have changed from this shoot um, and things that we've learned, you know, from this overall and adjustments we'd make moving forward. I think the main thing for me was to have a specialty gaffer or having a second assistant who would be responsible for um, focusing just on the lighting. Um, I think there was a lot of, of variability and it was too much for us, for our small team to really handle. Um, the other thing I would say is to have someone on set who is communicating with the client. This is what I mentioned before, but um, this is usually the role of a producer and I think as a creative, if you're taking on a big responsibility of something like this, you want to be focusing more on the actual creation because all of these variable factors will take you out of the creative process, out of that state where you can just focus on being the creative instead of doing all the other things. On the last shoot, I was able to do that more because the client was there and it was just a little bit less responsibility. That being said, it's fun to learn from these things and um, each time you make those mistakes or the things that become a little challenging, you can learn uh, to avoid those in the future so that's the only way to really learn and that's something that i'll take away from this shoot um alex do you have any thoughts or things that you would change um i think it's just nice to kind of share our experience with other people and like other younger creatives looking to produce these sort of projects um so yeah it's just nice to share the kind of mistakes we made and things we learned um and we really just want to take that forward with us and just produce better better projects um, as time goes by.